All right, so today in our series, we're talking about, am I faithful? In this Get Real series, we've asked ourselves questions. Am I, is God number one in my life? Um, am I patient? All, all these things that we've asked ourselves. And today we're asking ourselves, am I faithful? And I want to give you a couple definitions of faithful uh, based on the word and what it means. One translation, the word faithful means trustworthy, reliable, dependent. Okay, so you're, uh, the character, one of, it, one of it says this way, it says the character of someone who will finish and you can count on a, char- a characteristic. There it is. Characteristic. Got it now. Characteristic of someone that you can count on and you can rely on. That's a faithful person. It's also, it's also meaning full of faith. If you're faithful, you're full of faith, which means because you believe this, you will continue to do what you know you're supposed to do because you believe that, it, that the things you're doing or what you're supposed to do, and the end result will be good. So we're talking about being faithful, being full of faith, because that's how you become faithful. That's how you walk through faithful, walk a life of faithfulness, is your trust in God. And you know that God is going to take you through, and he's going to get you through whatever it is you're facing. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of scriptures, and I would encourage you to just do a, do a, do a study and look at how many scriptures talk about being faithful and talk about faithfulness. To me, It is one of the most important things that we're all called to do, is to be faithful. So we're going to talk about it. A couple of scriptures as we start. 2 Timothy 2, starting in verse 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, my sons, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. So, so, so Paul is saying, look, I want you to take what I've taught you, and I want you to help others to teach that. But there's a prerequisite for the people that need to teach us. They need to be faithful people. Okay, so it wasn't like select wise people. It wasn't select successful people. It was find faithful people who can teach. Because you can teach people certain things, but you can't really teach people to be faithful. You can help them understand the importance of it, but it's, it's, it's not find people that can teach and help them be faithful. It's find faithful people and then help them teach. We got to understand the importance of being faithful. Because faithfulness in the world we live in today, I'm telling you, it's one of the qualities that I think is missing in a lot of, in a lot of people in the world, including believers. Believers. And the Bible says in the last days, there's going to be a falling away. There's going to be people that they start and they're, they, they're excited, but they, they veer. And we're already seeing it. We're already seeing people falling away from what they originally believed. So we need to be faithful people that when we say, God, we're here, we're going to serve you. We've given our lives to you. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, uh, I read this actually last night, so I added this. But it says, when you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through. God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all the promises you make to him. In other words, be faithful. It's better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. Stay faithful. If you commit to something, stay faithful. Stay faithful. Faithful could mean doing the same thing over and over and over and over. You know, when I taught, uh, when I coached softball, I coached 16 and 18 youth softball, um, and, and these girls were college-bound to play, to play ball. That's what they were, I mean, they were good. And we played in front of college, college coaches. And there were certain things that we did every practice. We threw the ball, we hit the ball, we fielded the ball. I mean, that's softball, right? And there were certain things that just basic Rolling grounders, hitting grounders, over and over and over. And to keep growing, to keep getting better. You just stay faithful in doing that, and you'll grow. Stay faithful. You'll get better. Stay faithful. So being faithful in the sense of being full of faith means, all right, I'm going to keep doing this because I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to produce. I'm going to serve God no matter what. I'm going to serve God. 
Because I believe, and people can count on me. People can believe when they say, ask me to do something. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. We want to be that way. We want to be able to have faith in, obviously we have faith in God, but we need to have faith in each other. We need to be faithful people even in our normal relationships. You know, there have been people, and some of you have been those people, who you've been affected by a relationship where there was unfaithfulness. Maybe a, a, a spouse wasn't faithful. That happens all through our world. And it's difficult to, not, to walk through. It's difficult to handle. But it's so how quick we can just walk away from being faithful. And we got to be on guard on that because we have to believe that what we set our minds to do, that what God calls us to do, we got to stay the course because it will produce in the long run. Hebrews 11 6 says it's, possible to, it's impossible to please God without faith. So you're going to have to put your faith in God. If you want to please God, it's going to take faith. And if you have a faith that believes, then you're going to be faithful. And you're going to say the course because of your belief in God. So this is all just uh, helping us to get going. Now look at Proverbs 20, verse 6. Many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one who's truly reliable? One translation says, who can find someone who's really faithful? And I think that's a question that's asked, and I think it should be asked of us. And I think God asked that question. Who is faithful? Who's going to stay the course? It's not, it's easy to talk about because we, faithfulness just seems like, yeah, you just, I keep, I keep trusting in God. But again, this is going deeper to say, are you really trusting in God? Are you really staying the course? What does Monday look like compared to Sunday? What does Tuesday look like compared to Sunday? What what does your relationship with God look like when someone pulls in front of you on the freeway? What does it look like then? Faithfulness says I'm going to be the same person continually. Faithfulness says, I'm going to keep doing what's right. And when I mess up, doesn't mean you're not faithful. It's how you respond to that. You can, you, can, you can miss it and repent and get back on track, and you're still, you're good. But we got we to gotta understand the importance of faithfulness. So I've said a lot just about the, the overall being faithful. So how do we do it? Like how... How do we stay faithful? It's a choice we have to make. We have to, you're going to stay faithful to something. You're going to make a choice every day that's going to show where your allegiance is. So how do, how do we make sure we're, we're growing in, our, in an area of being faithful? One, look at God's example. God gives us a great example of faithfulness. We're going to go through a few scriptures real quick. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his command. So he's saying he's not just God, but he is indeed God and he is the faithful God. That's who we serve. Psalms 100, verse 5, <clears throat> for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Listen, I grew up, my grandpa was a, was a pastor. My grandpa got saved later in life, but, man, he served God. He went to Bible college. Uh, he was older. He had kids, but he, he, he went to Bible college and started in ministry. And I've seen how faithful God was to my grandpa. And I've seen how faithful God has been to my parents. And I see today and experience how faithful God is to me. And I tell my kids that God will be faithful to them. Because his faithfulness goes to every generation. Every generation. He's always faithful. And we talked about this before, but the Bible says that God does not change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is, say it with me, faithful. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. 
The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercy never ceases. Great is his what? Faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The temptation in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is, say it, faithful. God is faithful. That he won't allow the temptation to be more you can stand. And when you're tempted, he'll show you a way out so you can endure. God's faithful. 100% of the time, God will always be faithful to you. Always. I know there's times in life you're like, God, where are you? I'm just telling you 100% of the time, God is and will be faithful. It's who he is. So I don't have this in your notes, but Ephesians 5.1, I don't have it on the, on the screen, but Ephesians 5.1 says be imitators of God. So if God is faithful and we imitate God, we need to be faithful. We need to walk out this life of faithfulness. So we look at God's example of faithfulness, and that's how we begin to grow in it when we see, we see it modeled for us. And then uh, the second thing, look at other examples of faithfulness. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to, through 28. This is Paul speaking, and he says, Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. I've worked harder. I've been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number, Faced death again and again. Five different times the leaders gave me 39 lashes. Five different times. That's 195 lashes, if my math is correct. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and day adrift at sea. I've traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I've shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then besides all that, I have the daily burden and of my concerns for all the churches. So this is Paul, and he's talking about, look all that I've been through. But he stayed faithful. Faithfulness, the real, the, real, the real time when you know you're faithful is when you face challenge. You know you're being faithful when all of a sudden everything is coming against you. And you say, I will not move off this course that I'm on. Listen, if we talk practically, we face that a lot. Even as a pastor, there was times, listen, as a pastor, there's been times where I was just like, man, this is a lot. When COVID hit, it was, it was just, it was a mess. I've already told you this, but I'm not a video guy. Like, I don't do well with videos. I've been asked, hey, could you do a video? And then I was like, no, I can't. I can't. They've asked me to do announcement videos. I was like, I can't. I just, I look at a camera, I'm like, I just can't. I need people in front of me. I could be on a video if I'm talking to people and someone's just videoing, but just looking at a, a camera, that's not me. When we went to Zoom for those several weeks during COVID, I watched the first one, and I literally said, I would never go to that church. <laughs> that was the most boringest, like, and I'm usually not, like, I'm usually more animated. And, I, and then there was one time where I, I watched and I kept looking to the corner. And I'm speaking to the corner of the, the, um, the screen, yeah. So I'm just doing this. So the camera's here. And I'm like, and God says, and I'll tell you why. Because some of y'all were eating pancakes while I was preaching. But there was one couple that had their Bibles out, and they were just locked on the screen. And I was like, okay, I feel like I'm connecting with them. So I just drew to them. And then when I watched it, I was like, what am I looking at? Because all I see is, like, if, if I'm talking to somebody, I'm just like, hey, how you doing? And you're standing right there, like, hey, how you doing? Like, it was, it was just weird. I was like, I'm not, 
I'm not good at all that. So during that time, I wrestled with, I don't know how long I can do this. I, if, if this is, if this is going to be a long time, I, I don't know how I can do this. And I wrestled with my own giftings and do I have what it takes to do that? And how can I, how can I get around people? How can I figure this out? We, I even came in here and, and I, put, I, put the mon- I put monitors up with everybody's pictures on it. Nobody saw all the monitors I had in front of me. But that still, it still was, I, I still knew in my heart that they weren't really here. I still knew because all those chairs are empty. But I struggled. But can I tell you something? I just had this conversation with someone just a few weeks ago. I really felt like the Lord just put it in my heart not to look at the, whether it's good or bad, how effective it is or isn't, but that I would stay faithful. Just, just stay the course. I'm, he, I'm not even asking you, and I, I'm not saying he said it this way, but it was almost like I'm not even asking you to be good at it. But I'm saying keep at it. And I just kept going. I had the times. You're going to have times where you're like, I don't get this. I don't understand this. But stay faithful. Stay faithful. 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8. Paul says, as for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near, and I fought the good fight, and I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. Listen, at the end of my life, I don't care if people say I was successful. I don't care if people think, think, think anything of me. But what I would love for people to know and for what, what my life would speak is that that's a faithful man. That's a faithful man. I don't, I don't get up in the morning wondering you know, when are we going to pack this place out? And we got to grow. We got to get more people. We got to, y'all just know that every morning I got to be faithful. That's what I know. Every morning you got to be faithful to what God's called you to do, who God's called you to be. You got to stay faithful. So look at God's faithfulness. Look at the example of others. And here's one of the most important things in all of it. You got to be led by the spirit. Galatians 5.22, faithfulness is a fruit of the spirit. Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. You want to be faithful? Submit to the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. It can also be read this way. If you're struggling being faithful, that's an area where you need to submit to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't struggle with faithfulness. It's a natural, it's a fruit, it's, 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 a, it's a byproduct of who the Holy Spirit is. He's God, he's faithful. And if you surrender to the work of the Holy Spirit, you will be faithful. And we live in a time, and we'll talk about this in a minute, but we live in a time where there's so much pressure that there's a temptation to pull back in the things of the Lord. Pull back in things that are right. Pull back. And what we really need to do is stay faithful. We need to be loving, we need to be kind, but we need to stay faithful. And it's going to happen as we submit to the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. Fourth thing, focus more on being faithful than you do on being fruitful. I'm just telling you, it is more important to you to be faithful than it is to be fruitful. I know that sounds crazy. But the fruitfulness is God's stuff. The faithfulness is yours. It's not my job to produce anything in this church. It's not my job to produce anything in my life on my own. It's my job to stay faithful to what God has called me to do. And he will be faithful to me as I am faithful to him. We talked about this before, but even in Hebrews 11, it talks about, you know, faith is a substance of things hoped for. That word substance, the Greek word there, 
the root of that is the same word as Hebrews 1, 3, I believe it is, when it talks about the very person of Jesus. We, our faith is in God, and God will do what God does. Too many times we skip the God part and we go straight to a result. I have faith that I get that job. That's not what the Bible talks about. The Bible talks, you, you put your faith in the provider and God will provide the job for you, the right job. I can't tell you how many times people have confessed or believed for a particular thing and God had a different plan. And they didn't get the job and then they thought, well, I just didn't have enough faith. Actually, it wasn't that. Your faith is in the provider. The provider will provide the job. You skip the provider. You can't do that. Your faith is in God. In Hebrews, I mean, in Mark, where it talks about, you can say to this mountain, move here, there it says, have faith in God. Not have faith to move a mountain. Have faith in God, and then you can. But it's not because you have move, mounting moving faith. It's because you have faith in God, who is a mounting moving God. And it makes, it is different. So we got to be very careful what we confess and what we say and what we do. Our faith is in God and God does what God does. God is the healer. God is the provider. God is the peacemaker. God is the comforter. God is all of that. So our faith is in him. We stay faithful to him and he does what he promises to do. And I think that's, that's something that helps us know that I've always been, I've always seen and heard, especially in pastor uh, leadership things, there's a big focus at times on fruitfulness. And I'm not saying that that's bad, but the way fruitfulness comes is through faithfulness. So, and I remember a long time ago, I see, I've heard it this way. It was like, okay, here's, 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 here's life. You're faithful. You're faithful, still not seeing anything. You're faithful, nothing's happened yet. You're faithful, still not seeing anything. You're faithful, starting to wonder, come on. You're faithful, say it with me. You're, and then you're, and then you're, and then all of a sudden one time you keep doing it and then you're fruitful. Because faithfulness will always lead to fruitfulness. But the fruitfulness is not your responsibility. The faithfulness is your responsibility. We got to be people that are faithful. And we will see the fruitful. It's well done, good and faithful servant. Not well done, good and fruitful servant. Not well done, good, and successful servant. Not well done, good, and rich servant. It's well done, good, and faithful servant. No matter what, we stay faithful. Look at Acts 20, verse 22 through 24. Paul says, I'm bound by the, or he said, I'm bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me. Except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Here's why I put that scripture in there. There was no promise of all this fruit for Paul in this moment. The only promise was suffering. The only promise was jail and difficulty. And he, he, he was not about, well, I, I need to go where I can be successful. He said, I'll go where I can be faithful, even if it means prison, even if it means suffering, even if it doesn't, if, even if I don't see the results right away. I'm going to be faithful. Faithfulness is the three Hebrew children when, when they said, hey, you need to bow down or we're going to crank that fire so much hotter. And they said, listen, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, we're not going to bow down. Our God will rescue us. See, that's faith. The faithfulness side is this. 
But even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow. I'm going to be faithful whether this works to my benefit or not. I'm not just going to be faithful because I know I win in the end. I'm going to be faithful because I'm faithful, because I serve a God who's faithful, and he's never failed me, and I'll never quit on him, even if it doesn't end up well for me. Will you still be faithful if you don't get everything that you think you should get? Will you still be faithful? That's the question we're asking. Number five, kind of goes along with what we just talked about. Everything's been very encouraging, but I need to tell you this. Faithfulness will cost you. It'll cost you. At some point, it'll cost you. We live in a world where there is there is coming against believers in a lot of ways. Not just in our country, in the world, all around. And there's going to be times we're going to be asked to compromise what's right. To say things are right when they're not right. To do things that aren't right. And at that moment, faithfulness will cost you. Peter was told... When they arrested him, they were, after all, you know, they healed the lame man and they were sharing the good news and then they were arrested. And then they were thrown in jail and then they, they were told, you know what, don't ever speak about this Jesus again. And then they, they got out miraculously and they went right back to talking about Jesus. Why? Because they were faithful even when they knew it would cost them. Paul was faithful when he said, I know that, that suffering and jail await me, but my, wife, my life is worth nothing unless I do what he wants me to do. I'm going to stay faithful. Listen, I already have, it, and you have too. I've had to make decisions that I knew would hurt people, but I knew it was the right decision. I knew it was what God wanted us to do or, so, or what God didn't want us to do. And I had to stay faithful. This is who we are. This is what we believe. Sometimes it'll, it'll cost you. I don't say that to scare you, but I say that to say it's the world we live in. When you look at the New Testament church, it costs people. Aren't you glad Jesus was faithful? He went through all the suffering. He went through it all for us. And there comes a time, and there will come a time, and Revelation even talks about it, even that of being faithful even unto death. And we're not at that place necessarily as a nation, but the world we live in, there are people today that if they stay faithful, they will be killed. And there's people every day within our denomination that are saying yes, knowing their life depends on it. And they're saying they're staying faithful even though they know it could be their last day. How faithful are we? That's what we got to be careful of because the culture around us is changing so much. And I'm telling you, the temptation for us to compromise, the temptation for us to, to do things, it's, it's, it's there. But it's going to cost you to stay the course. Are you willing? Are you willing? There's some, some people, and this is just a generic thing. I'm not talking about anybody in particular. But there's some times where, listen, we, we live one way here and we live different out there. Because out there, we would get a little more whatever. Here, everybody's singing. Everybody's worshiping. Everybody's listening to the message. Out there, they're not. So out there, you're going to face a little more pushback. You're going to face a little more pressure. You're going to face a little more, uh, you know, temptation. So when you ask about being faithful, how, how are you out there? 
Do you talk the same way during the week as you do in here? Do you live the same way out there that you do here? Are you as passionate about Jesus out there as you are here? That's faithfulness says yes. Faithfulness says yes. If I wouldn't say it here, I'm not going to say it there. Faithfulness says if I wouldn't act like that here, I'm not going to act like that there. Faithfulness says if God wants me to do this, I'm going to do this out there. That's faithfulness. And that's, that's why I'm saying at some point, at some point we're going to be faced with that. 1 Peter 4, 19. So if you're suffering in a matter that pleases God, keep on doing what's right. And trust your lives to God who created you. He'll never fail you. When you do have to stand your ground and be faithful, trust God to take care of you. Because he will. He'll take care of you. Why? He's faithful. And he always will be. He's a faithful God. There's a guy in the in scripture, his name is Demas, D-E-M-A-S. And uh, in, in the book of Philemon, it talks about how he was uh, a laborer with, with Luke, and he, and he did a lot of, you know, things to help, and he was a great support in the ministry there. Then it talks about, again, in Colossians 4, it talks about that he, was, he came alongside of Luke and was very helpful. And then when you get to Timothy, and we just read this in our um, reading not too long ago when we went through Timothy. 2 Timothy 4.10, it says this, Demas has deserted me because he loves the things of this life. He loves the things of this life. One translation says because he loves the things of the world. Listen, there, there, there are times if you lose focus and you get going in other things and in other areas and you really begin to allow the, the world to pull you in, it's going to affect you. It's going to affect you. You know, we, I remember this song we sang when I was little. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Remember that song? Anybody remember that? Be careful, little ears, what you hear. And here's what I'm saying in that. You, <laughs> thank you for that extra. Here's the thing, though. We have to make sure that we're filling ourselves up. With the word, spending time with a God who's faithful, surrendering to the spirit of God who is faithful in us and through us. Because the world is trying desperately to grab your attention and to pull you away from what is right. And and we just have to be on guard because all of us are subject to missing it if we start to lose focus. Listen, you can have a boat in the middle of the lake and you're fine. Miles of water all around. But if that water starts getting in the boat, you're done. You can be around all the water. It can can surround you. But if it gets in, there's a problem. You can live in this world You can be around all kinds of stuff. And you can let your light shine and it's all and you're, but you're around all this stuff. But if it starts getting in, it's going to be bad. It's going to struggle. So stay faithful even when it gets tough. And then the last thing, and we mentioned this a little bit, but don't forget. That faithfulness will lead to fruitfulness. Just don't forget that. Staying faithful will lead to fruitfulness. May not look like what you think. You think, well, Revelation talks about being faithful unto death. Listen, there's so much after that you're going to experience in heaven with the creator of this world. Forever and ever and ever. There's so much that God has for you. There's so much good that God's going to do in you and through you. And who knows that even some of the things that have taken place and some of the sacrifices that you have gone through, you may never know how they're helping someone else. 
you may never know that your faithfulness spoke to someone else. Listen, I'll tell you this. My grandfather was a very godly man. He ended up with throat, throat cancer and they took out his, a bunch of his like esophagus, throat stuff and moved his stomach up because what would take food to his stomach was there. So he used to joke around like, man, my stomach hurts. And he put his hand up here. Well, at the end of his life, he's, he's having a hard time breathing. And they take him to the hospital. And the last thing he says as he's dying, he tells the the emergency workers let everything that has breath praise the Lord not heal me God he's like I'm going to leave this place serving him even if I leave this place I'll leave it serving him I never forgot it. How does someone who's grasping for air even think about quoting scripture to people that the last thing he would say with the last few breaths he had on his own let everything that has breath what it would sound like gasping but in his gasping he's like I'm faithful I'm going to serve him till the last breath I'm going to declare the goodness of God to my last breath if you're just if you're just thinking that everything has to go your way it's going to be hard for you because faithfulness says, I'm faithful to God. I'm not faithful to get. I'm faithful to God for what he's done. And I'm going to serve him all the days of my life. I'm going to honor him every day, every minute. And I'm staying the course. And on that last day, may it be said, at the last moment of someone's life. Man, they were so faithful. They were so faithful. So listen, be faithful. Galatians 6 says you'll reap a harvest if you don't give up. Keep going. Matthew 5 talks about your reward is in heaven. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil against you because you're my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great award awaits you in heaven. I'm going to say this cautiously and carefully. We need to be more focused on heaven and less focused here. Because we look at things, and I, and I think we want to believe God for miracles and signs. and wonders. We want to believe God for all that. I'm not going against that at all. But I'm saying heaven is the ultimate for all of us. It's the ultimate. There's no greater place. That's where our reward is. If the reward that we're looking for doesn't happen here on earth the way we want it to or the way we think it should, can I just tell you, listen, God's faithful here on earth too. But I am telling you this, that there is a reward that awaits you that is greater than anything. And it's for you as a faithful believer. Proverbs 28, 20. A faithful man will abound with blessings. Abound with blessing. If you're faithful, 
Listen, don't, don't quit. Don't stop. You keep going and you keep going. And even if you sometimes don't even know, listen, you just keep going. God can direct you. You can't steer a parked car very well. So you keep following God. And as you're moving, he will direct you. He will see to it. If you're open, that he will lead you down the right places, down the right path. But faithfulness says, I'm not stopping. I'm not quitting. Bow your heads with me. When I was studying this, I realized this is one of the most necessary words that we could hear. Because there's a, there's a practical level of faithfulness that we do sometimes. But there is a deep, deep place of faithfulness that requires something of us. And it also, it also will, will help us. You'll be able to see it in our everyday life. So here's my question to you. What's the Holy Spirit speaking to you about faithfulness? Because I'm going to be honest with you. There was areas in my life where I, I even questioned God. I would always think that I'm very faithful to you. But even just looking how I navigate some circumstances that, that come up, certain challenges that I face, when I don't know what to do or how to handle something, it's so easy for me to get frustrated or distracted. But I'm telling you, I want more than anything to hear these words, well done, good and faithful servant. This may not be a great thing for some people to hear, but I'm just telling you, as your pastor, I'm not worried about fruitfulness. I'm not worried about success. I'm not worried about what everybody thinks the church should look like. I'm worried about being faithful to God, the one who called me. And to do what he's called me to do, no matter what everyone else would think or say. That I will be faithful and I will stay the course. And for those that are with me, are with me. But just like the song goes, though none go with me, still I'll follow. Because I've decided I'm following Jesus. I'm doing what he's called me to do. all of us to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to see what areas do we need to surrender to him and allow the Spirit in us to help us be more faithful. Last thing, everybody look up at me for a second. I'm going to tell you what this world needs more than anything. More than anything. More than whatever, more than you think whoever needs to be in the White House. I'm going to tell you what this world needs. Faithful followers of Jesus. That's what we need. That's what it needs. No matter what happens in a couple weeks, we need to be faithful followers of Jesus. Because this is what's going to help people navigate through whatever goes on. Whatever the cost, let's keep serving. Let's keep loving. Let's keep growing. Let's keep forgiving. Let's be people of hope. Let's be people of faith. Let's be people of courage. But let's go day by day by day. Today, I will be faithful. Tomorrow you get up, today, I will be faithful. Tuesday when you get up, today, I will be faithful. Wednesday, today, I will be faithful. Let God work on the fruitful. You focus on the faithful. I promise you, things will change. I promise you. It's already changing. Let's be faithful people. Let's be faithful people. You with me?